Noon. I want to start out today, if you guys don't mind, and just announce our 2024 team captains uh, voted on by the players. Uh, we've got Harrison Smith, Josh Metellus, and Harrison Phillips on the defensive side. Justin Jefferson, Sam Darnold, Brian O'Neill, CJ Ham on the offensive side, and then Andrew DePaula um, for the special teams unit. Um, hopefully you guys get a chance to uh, see what we're going to do, uh, a new display that we're going to have to honor um, Jim Marshall, who was a 14-time captain, um, you know, one of the greatest you know, captains uh, in the, for sure, the history of our organization, but I believe in the NFL as well. Um, you know, uh, a great way to honor him and uh, just continue to highlight the, the great history of our, of our organization and make sure our players not only understand that, on a daily basis around here, but uh, but uh, I know our fan base certainly does already, but it's a great way to do that. So we will have the Jim Marshall uh, Vikings captain legacy wall down uh, right where the players enter the building. Um, we'll take you guys down there and let you see it um, and, and take a look at that. But we're really proud of it. It'll have this year's captain's uh, photo along with a photo of Jim uh, and, a, and a little bio. And then it will also list every captain in the history of the Minnesota Vikings um, there as well. So really cool, um, something that uh, you know I was really excited about when I heard that, that we had those plans and I'm excited to announce that. Uh, game week, moving, uh, feels like we've talked a lot about the lead up, the process, um, things building our football team, but I'm very, very excited uh, to have the game week upon us and, and our team is already off to a great start with our preparation, but heck of a challenge going on the road in week one. Um, expecting a, a great environment there at MetLife, and, and we got to be ready to go. Yeah, he's uh, he's doing he's doing better, and, and he was uh, limited uh, really on Monday and, and moved around quite well. He'll do a little more today, uh, and then we'd like to kind of progress him hopefully to full to full by the end of the week. But I think Jordan's in a in a good spot, and, and uh, feels I feel pretty good about him making the game. Yeah, he's he's uh, a couple days behind Jordan, but I think he's progressing really well, and and uh, hope to give you guys an update on that a little later in the week. But I feel really, really good about where Jalen's at, and and uh, off the training camp he had a um, lot of a lot of work um, uh, with that first group, and being able to be out there uh, with that group would be big for us. What does he have? Uh, ankle. They both have ankles. From yeah, sorry. Practice, from practice or when? when uh, it was. It was. Uh, it was from practice. Yeah. You know, I think when I think about Josh, you know, it, we, we make a lot out of his fit in our defense, and that's great and all, but Josh is just a really good football player. He's a really good safety. He's a really good tackler. He's a really good cover player, um, versatile to do a lot of different things off the charts from a football smarts standpoint, how he communicates with Cam and Harry and the rest of the defense, uh, the, the ability to play so many parts in the defense that's where you know I just don't want to get lost in the system fit and the scheme fit of just what a really good football player Josh is and uh, continues to you know really grow within the leadership world I mean almost unanimous captain uh, a guy that you know people really look to to set the tone every day in our building um, but yeah he's he had a great year last year and I'm expecting the same out of him again this year yeah yeah, I mean, you know, they go out and add, you know, another premier edge player. Uh, got a ton of respect for Burns. And then, you know, Noah Thibodeau on the other side has been a, a player that's really just continues to ascend. And you can see it all over the tape of his first round ability and what he's kind of grown into. Uh, there's no question, you know, their defense is very strong on the front. And, you know, you, you have to, when you mention those two guys, you have to mention Lawrence in the middle. Um, we, you know, going back a couple years ago, just remember how much of an impact he was, and, and I think their linebackers are really good, and I think they, you know, have a, uh, a really versatile secondary to play a lot of different ways and coverages. So it really all works together. Um, you know, we we got a chance to practice against Tennessee um, when they came in here when when uh, Shane was their D coordinator for Vrabes, um, and just thought they were really well coached, 
really tough, ran to the ball, did all the little things uh, that make it hard to play against defenses that do those things in this league. And I think he's really good from a scheme standpoint. So we, you know, we have our work cut out for us for sure um, of going on the road with the obviously element of noise and all those things. We've got to practice and prepare for it. Um, and then, you know, make a lot of the things that we've worked on come to life. Kevin, how do you, how much do you use those joint practices as kind of a template for what you would expect from the Giants? You know, it's the same coordinator, but then maybe I'm Yeah, I, I think it's totally different team. It's totally different personnel. Um, they, you know, obviously had a lot of success there defensively, and he had a, a ton to do with it. I think that's what led him to getting a great op with Dave's there in New York. And um, so we have to, you know, obviously do every, every turnover, every stone we can. Uh, but I think we're going to have to, you know, trust in our plan, trust in uh, owning our own plan. And then, uh, you know, we, we have some experience, just whether it's coverages or things like that, to Justin of adapting and evolving throughout a game. Um, but certainly uh, something that we're going to need to do right off the bat. What do you want to see or expect to see from Sam early in the season? Yeah, I mean, you know, what I want to see and expect to see is what he's done just daily basis for our team, how he's prepared from really when he first got here all the way through a full training camp. Uh, I think he's really confident. I think his teammates are really confident in him, not only just the physical side of things from throwing the ball and, um, you know, his ability to be accurate, his ability to push the ball downfield, make great decisions um, w within the rhythm and timing of the play. But I think it's, it's just that comfort of the work he's put in. And, and, and really, uh, I say this a lot, but the 2024 offense um, is this year's version of our offense. It, it might look different. It might look similar. Um, we've, got, we've got a lot of things we're really excited about, a lot of players we're really excited about, and Sam is certainly one of them. But I expect him to go out and, uh, you know, just execute the offense and play well. And with his skill set, I, I think, uh, you know, Sam's going to be in a good spot. Kevin, the games you played against the Giants in 2022, I think, I think so, just because, you know, you at least know um, I have a ton of respect for, for Dabes as a head coach in this league. And he's, you know, he's not just a, you know, offensive guy. He's had a great ownership of that whole team. Um, so I think his impact on how they've played previously against us, you know, could show up a little bit. Um, but at the same time, a lot of the players, when you talk about Dexter Lawrence, you talk about um, Thibodeau, you talk about, you know, Dory Jackson and some of these guys that uh, we've played, we've played against in that uniform, in that, you know, albeit a different scheme, but, you know, X's and O's aside, personnel still matters. And um, we've got to be prepared to play a bunch of really good players on Sunday. Yep. How much do you think that was the contract Yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I can't stress enough the growth that I've seen from him, um, you know, on the field has been, you know, uh, an unbelievable start to his career these, these years that he's really stepped on the grass and immediately, uh, you know, showed up as one of the best players at his position. But he, I think he loves being a Minnesota Viking. I think... I know I love our relationship that we have and, and my ability to, you know, have Justin be a major resource for me to reach the football team through that relationship uh, and just my, my trust level in him of uh, doing the things that he needs to do to lead our group. That receiver room is one thing, um, but just our offense and just the standard we want to have, um, it's easy to rely on Justin to do that because he's got such an incredibly high standard for himself. And it's... You know, I'm, I'm really proud of the way, you know, he's handled a lot of things, you know, whether it was going back to the adversity he personally dealt with last year with the injury, how he came back from that. Um, you know, the business side of things is always going to be part of the National Football League. But uh, we try to build something around here that kind of transcends that. Hopefully in every situation, it's not always possible. But, um, you know, how he handled that, I think his teammates were watching everything with Justin. They always are. And uh, he knows that. Said, I'm not playing until I get a new contract. He didn't say that. He certainly could throw it against what seems like the typical wide receiver role. Yeah, I, you know, I, I can't really speak. I, I, being honest, I don't really know much about that situation. Um, maybe if we hadn't got that deal done with Justin and, and be as excited as I was about it, maybe I'd be, you know, monitoring some of those things a little closer. Uh, but yeah, I can just say uh, he had, you know, every 
every option of how um, you know people can handle those situations. And there's times during the type of dialogue that I have with players that conversations get real, and uh, I wouldn't want it to be any other way. But I think, and I hope at, at the end of all this, Justin um, has known since day one that I got his back, and I'm always going to try to help him be the best version of himself, uh, grow as a leader, grow as a you know a, a major major part of this organization and I think that's something as long as you consistently do that with your players from Justin Jefferson to every guy on our practice squad my hope is they'll respond to the way we do things and um, good things are going to happen and people are going to treat each other right respectfully and the right the right kind of decisions and process will lead to really good outcomes which that was uh, a great outcome for the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, you know, I remember studying him coming out and, and meeting with him. Can't remember if it was at the combine or um, here on a 30 visit. You know, we really talented player, uh, super competitive. That's the one thing that always jumped out to me uh, is just how competitive and how much he wanted, you know, that matchup or wanted uh, to be able to, you know, go compete right at the line of scrimmage against people and uh, physically. You know, he he runs really well. He's strong. He's a good tackler. He's, you know, I, I think he's. Uh, really an ascending player uh, in our league, and, and he showed that last year for sure. What, what's your plan for uh, McCarthy as the season starts? I'm sure he's not going to go to this game, but I mean, is he going to be at the home games? Do you want him to, in a certain place on the sideline when he's off the scooter? Yeah, what's I think I think we're, you know, I'll defer to the medical folks uh, only so far um, in regards to that because I want him, I want him, uh, you know, I want to see him. I want his teammates to see him every day. I want him in meetings. Uh, I'm going to meet with him personally uh, one day, you know, one day a week and make sure that, um, you know, I can be personally challenging him on his ownership of the game plans, uh, the why behind things we're doing, play intent for me, uh, you know, making sure he's still having a major role leadership wise with especially that young rookie class that, uh, you know, between undrafted guys and guys we drafted. Uh, feel very strong about their impact on our team, but uh, I want JJ to feel like he's a support system for Sam, part of the quarterback room, that culture of that quarterback room, but at the same time, um, bigger picture, making sure we don't waste uh, one moment where you know there could be some growth and development and really continue the positive momentum that I think a lot of us saw in training camp before the injury. Yeah, he's good to go. He, uh, you know, he had a pinky that. Um, kind of happened there, and uh, I think he'll. He's been wearing, you know, something very small on it. Uh, how long that stays on, I, I don't know. Because once they told me Blake's good to go, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not overly concerned about what contraption he has on his pinky. But um, I, I will say, you know, very much. You know, I felt the addition of Blake. All jokes aside, and uh, he's been phenomenal for us, and uh, expect that to show up on Sunday. Yep. The personnel group here with the fullback. Yeah. I guess how much different is that from your standpoint, seeing and trying to keep those players in different ways than you would from the other team? Yeah, I, I think it's a, great, it's a great question. It's one I've thought about because I, I value so much the, the ability to have some personnel versatility on how you call a game. Um, but yeah, that was, we were so driven in that world. Sometimes it, you know, just from a simple preparation standpoint, you get into the weekend and week out of a season, um, if you've got to watch, you know, multiple personnel groupings, that takes time away from honing in on maybe an extra detail in this grouping or that grouping. So it's really kind of just changed the way I go about the week, um, changed the way as we've kind of evolved and tried to do some things with our run game, um, learning, you know, different ways of not only doing that, but then how does that affect the pass game and the ability to marry it all up. So I think we're growing and, and have grown. Um, over over the period of time that I've been here, and we've tried to be more versatile from a personnel standpoint. But it is something, especially as a play caller, uh, you know, you adjust to and try to figure out. You're only going to get so many ops. You only get so many plays. You only you, you can have every play in the world you want on the call sheet. But in the end, you're going to get this many normal down first and second down calls. You're going to get this many third downs. You're going to get this many red zone chances, and, and then you're two minute. But uh, those in total, you know, normally average about 60 to 70 plays uh, any given week, and you know you, you got to make sure your focus is not being uh, slighted in any one area, you know, as especially as the play caller. Last one. Just to follow up, that uh, for opponents, it seems like 
Yeah, I think you just want to make sure if I'm doing it, they got to do it <laughs> type of thing. And then they got to evaluate how we do things compared to maybe other teams that are they're more or less 21 or 12 or 13 or whatever it is. And, and then, you know, if sometimes it's hard for us, if they haven't seen, that's where you really see it. If, you, you know, they haven't seen uh, a team that wants to play like that. Uh, you know, you're you're searching for some your clips and you're really trying to evaluate how things will carry over. And then there's no rule that says they got to play exactly the way uh, they they did on in any one particular game or snap. So you got to be ready to evolve. You got to have a system where you can identify things. You got to have a system where uh, all 11 guys, regardless of what the defense does, can have a clear cut plan of how they want to play out each play. And then, you know, where it goes from there is kind of an in-game fun side of it for me.